Hello and thanks for watching this video focusing on some enhancements and feature improvements for Enterprise Solutions 2014 or 14.0. I'm in the inventory center and I have this interior door kit which is a sub-assembly of a larger final inter interior door kit assembly. And Enterprise already has some features in the assembly process that are more advanced than Premier, like actually being able to do a variable build or, or pulling components off when you're building the assembly. But one thing it never could do till this year, and I'm actually going to go to build assemblies, is if I put in, you know, quantity of 40, and you probably see this checkbox says build nested assemblies like that and tab off, it's going to tell me, you know, I have to make pending. And that's because uh, the interior door kit itself, the sub-assembly of this larger assembly, only has 20 on hand. So, you know, before, even though it's cool that I could go in and I can, you know, quickly edit a, oh, let me, let me X out of there for a second. There we go. That'll help. Even though I can go ahead and edit this component item and swap it out, which is great. Premiere doesn't do that, but the, you know, the, a lot of the columns are editable in, in enterprise on the build assembly, which helps manufacturers and distributors and wholesalers and those doing retail type work. And you're actually having a, a finished product that has many stages to it. Uh, so, you know, I put in the 40 there. It said it was make it pending. So I'd have to go then build all the subcomponents or sub assemblies in, before I actually build the finished good. And you guys know that know that to be true for uh, building assemblies within enterprise. However, if I check off the box to build nested assemblies and then which I think it now says in, in R1, I'm in the beta 3, but in R1 it's going to say, you know, build uh, sub-assemblies. So it's going to be, I think the language is going to be clear. Although in the industry, as you guys know, it's, it's nested assemblies. If I put in 40 now and tab off, there's no pending. So it's actually, when I click build and close, it's going to build the actual sub-assembly as well. Or exploding build, I think, is another term in the industry that this uh, now supports. So it's a lot easier now to do the assembly process within QuickBooks if you're using Enterprise 14 because it'll build the sub-assemblies for the finished product when you build the finished product. Okay, so that should save you time there. Let me clear that so I can show it at another time. Another thing too, I'm actually going to go into the uh, assembly itself and you notice that my cost is zero. We have some preferences. So last year in QuickBooks we came out with the ability to, you know, update uh, costs and price. I think it was a pop-up over the last couple of years we've had that, but for assemblies we have not had that. So now if I go to edit preferences, you see it's zero, right? I'm going to go to edit preferences and then of course items and inventory and company preference. You get on automatic cost and price updates. So, you know, this is for, for non-assembly items, we've had this, you know, but now I can use the auto-updated bill of material cost for the assembly cost and when the bill of material cost changes, update the actual sales price itself. So that, when, when I go ahead and click OK, and it's going to have me close all open windows, I'll come back into the inventory center in a second as it comes back around. So now you see, as we go back to my interior door kit final, the cost has changed to $191 uh, using the global preference there. And I can do a user-defined cost and put it in myself if you want, or I can do a total bill of material cost. Uh, if I like. So it'll update it based on the preference you have. And I'm going to use the global preference there. So $120 for the uh, total bill of material costs you see down here in my, my bomb here. Now, I can also edit the markup and put in a percent here. And it'll automatically calculate the margin for me. So you could either do a markup percent or a margin, depending on how you like, and then you can choose a type of markup. And, and so I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. And then that's my new cost and that's my price. And when my cost change of a component item, the actual uh, sales price will be reflected as well. And that's important because sometimes you'll go in and I wanted to show you guys another thing with the assemblies is this where used report. So I'll go to this interior door kit and right click on it, choose assemblies where used, and it's going to say it's part of the door kit final, but I could also replace it with a different item if I want to. 
uh, and you might see you might see an item that's part of several different uh, kits or several different assembly items or finished goods and you can replace them with ease and when you replace it with a particular part and that cost changes because the parts have a different cost it'll update not only the cost of the entire entire bomb but also the sales price so that's uh, I really like that piece and and you can take a piece off of um, an actual kit just by leaving it blank see leave blank to remove from selected assemblies you click replace it's going to give you a warning and then it'll take it off or you can choose you know instead of the interior door i want to do an exterior door for that and now i'm going to replace the interior door kit from an interior to an exterior door click replace and it's going to replace it and now if i actually go to the interior uh, door kit and we'll look at the bomb you see now it's an exterior so uh, that helps and it'll update also the cost if the cost change and then the sales price and you want to set up your markups uh, and margins for these items definitely okay so those are the assembly uh, improvements uh, for enterprise 14 and some of the preferences that you're going to see there now let's go to um, advanced pricing which is also a preference and this is what i told you is the add-on uh, for um, the advanced pricing module and it, and it really just allows you to do quantity discounts uh, you can set up price rules as opposed to price levels and, and there's much more complexity as far as uh, rules and parameters you can apply for a date range uh, you can do an exclusive override if you will and assign it to customers uh, or items and other things so i'll show you here i'm going to go into sales and customer preference and its company preferences down at the bottom so you know Regular price levels is what you have for price levels, and you can click the link to, to read the real difference between price levels and price rules. But in my mind, if knowing price levels for, for so long in QuickBooks, price rules are just much more sophisticated than what you can do. And you guys will show this. I'm going to show you the price rule list. I've set up a couple already. I'm not going to round the price, but you can choose uh, to do rounding across all price rules or set a, a, a rounding for each price rule. So it's really like more of a almost some advanced point of sale technology within enterprise itself and that's important to note here in this video that you, know, you might want point of sale that's great it has excellent user security and it's really for a retail establishment but if you're doing tons of invoicing i would rather have enterprise and i have the security in enterprise i can use the barcode scanning that's part of advanced inventory and now i have the advanced price rules so i mean that's it's a worthy argument and debate if i need point of sale or can i just go along with enterprise so I'm not talking you out of point of sale. I'm just saying this is really helpful. So I'm going to go to list price rule list, and I set up a couple. One was my Oktoberfest door special. So let's drill in there, and basically I I just set it for uh, one customer, okay, and that's just going to be my Ruby customer. But I could choose other customers as well. I could also set the condition for items, classes, or sales reps, uh, which might be helpful. And I'll show you another one where I have where items. Also. Um, I did it in a date range, so 10-1 through 12-20, that's when I celebrate Oktoberfest, typically here in Texas, and then I set the price to be 10% lower, but you have some options. You can do an amount, you know, lower or higher, and then either the base price or the cost, and then you can set up a price override that regardless of the actual uh, rule I have set up, the price for, let's say, the appliance or the cabinets will still be what the price override is. It's exclusive to that item. So I have that item set up, and I also have a summer sale item set up, and they are conflicting, actually. I did that on purpose. This one runs from June 21st to October 20th. It's 20% lower than the base price, just to give you guys an idea. And I actually set the condition to be for all inventory parts. So we'll show this, and then I'll go into the, the discounting on the items, which is still, still part of the advanced pricing, but different from, say, a price rule. So let's go to the doorknob uh, standard or the interior door kit, I guess that's fine. And we'll just do a sales receipt. And let the sales receipt come up there. There we go. And I'm gonna choose my Ruby customer. And I'll go ahead and choose the uh, interior door. Oops, let me see here, INT, there you are. And you'll see this little icon. Now I'm doing 12, 15, 17. And let's say he's gonna buy two of them. But when you click on the icon, the little Z icon there, it actually shows the door special that I have for the, the fall, and it's 10% off, and I can, it's already been applied, right? Um, if I change to, you know, going out a month, 
or to like January, you know, as the price goes back to the base price of 72 and the icon's gone, no price rule is actually in effect for this date range. Let me go back to um, October 1st. And you'll see the price is uh, different. I click on the Z icon here. There's actually two specials, a 20% or 10. And it's obviously going to choose the, the, it's choosing, or I'm going to choose the one uh, that's greater, of course. And I know you're not going to have conflicting rules, but just in case someone did that, it, it warns you. You've selected conflicting price rules. So that's helpful too. And it always shows me the last sold price right on, when I'm on the transaction. This information very helpful. Uh, and then it tells me the total adjustments here and what the price will be. So love that piece. Um, also, let's look at the discounts. And I'm going to go back to um, my, let's see what open windows I have, the inventory center. And yes, I am using the left icon bar often. I love the dark blue. Uh, I'm not going with the top icon bar like I was last year. I'm just not a big dark gray fan. You know, what, what can I say about that really? Do like the dark blue. So doorknob standard, um, I'm going to edit this item and I can set, I've set up two, two discounts on it. I love this one. Probably my, it's my favorite, but you take it with a grain of salt. It's just cool to be able to do all this stuff within QuickBooks financial, right? Without, without an add on. I mean, it is the, the advanced pricing is, is an add on, but still, uh, it's within QuickBooks. It's our own functionality. So our enterprise can do a lot with the advanced pricing. So I have a quantity set up. The cost is 50, uh, sales price is 30 bucks, but it's 28.50 if I buy 20 or more, and then 30 or more is 27 dollars. Right. So I have the discount set up there on the the actual doorknob doorknob standard. Let me go back to my sales receipt here, and uh, I'm going to add a, a standard doorknob there, and I have you know set up at 24. Now that's probably because there's a price rule on there. I'm going to, I'm going to take it off for now, because uh, you can, and I'm back to the 30 bucks and I'll do 20 here and you see it changes to 2850 and then I'll do 30 changes to 27. So, and that's uh, very helpful with that and shows again, the last sold price and then the, the base price. Again, this is based on my discounting. So quantity discounting also uh, very exciting with enterprise 14 and, and in the advanced pricing. So let's talk about the exclusivity of a rule or being able to do price overrides, I should say. Um, if I go back to my inventory center and I believe my brass hinges, they have, uh, if I go to the actual price rule, they have uh, ex exclusive uh, a price override of three dollars regardless of the rule actually let me go to the price rule list sorry about that and you'll see when i go to summer sale here and if it's during these months so june 21st to 10 20 2017 here's my price override and, and i'm not combining it with anything else but the brass hinges is three dollars regardless of the percentage so when i'm on my actual sales receipt and i choose brass hinges I should expect to see three dollars, you know, and um, even though there's, it's exclusive you know, as part of the summer sale price rule for this particular item. So even though it should be, you know, twenty percent off, it's still going to be three bucks because I, I created a price override for brass hinges against that rule, even when it's in play. So quite a bit of sophistication and functionality uh, regarding. Let me go to window close all now regarding, you know, some of the features within enterprise uh, 14. And then finally, I wanted to, to show you guys another thing. If I go back to the inventory center, uh, you can set the max and min for an item uh, for ordering, which can be very helpful. So if I go in and edit this particular item, I can actually send a max. Go quantity enhance 246. My max is 300. So I'm never going to order more than that. And where this comes into play is when I go ahead and do my stock status report and auto create purchase orders, it'll take into effect, into effect the, uh, or factor in the maximum. So I don't over order and you can even do available quantity. So there might, you might have sales orders for this. And when I go to create auto purchase orders, it's, it's just not going to order more than that maximum. So that's, uh, also very helpful for anybody, you know, 
ordering items, tracking inventory stock, and not wanting to overorder, and doing build assemblies. And then, of course, for that pricing sophistication that's part of the advanced pricing module um, within Enterprise 14. And, of course, advanced pricing is an add-on by price. You have to pay for that $3.99 a year and have to have a full service plan. But that in tandem with the advanced inventory, and I just love the quantity discounting. So I hope that was helpful. It gives you a kind of a bird's eye view of some new things within Enterprise. Uh, look for another short video of mine uh, regarding job costing enhancements within Enterprise Solutions 14. You guys have a great day.